Ooh, just dropped that all over my hand. Did not expect that to come out that fast. And oil of choice, we're using Honda 10W30 and DM4 oil, whatever it's called. <laughs> Yo, what is going on YouTube? It is Willie Weasel here. And today we got this 2017 CRF 450RX. And if you can't tell, she is all clean and spiffed up. And you can't tell also, Daisy is here to work on the bike with us. We're gonna be doing an oil change today, changing the oil filter. This bike needs a little bit of maintenance done because I broke the wheels off of it the last, I don't know, like week, week and a half and haven't really had time to do anything with it because it's been so cold. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. Okay, so first things first, when you're changing your oil, you wanna let your bike warm up just for a little bit. You don't wanna start it for like five minutes and let it warm up. You just wanna start it for like 10, 20, 30 seconds, you know, just to let the oil kind of warm up, circulate a little bit through the engine. That way when it comes out, it's not gonna be all thick and viscous and you know, take a long time to drain from the top end. So what we'll do next, turn on that little fast idle and then. After the oil warms up and circulates, you know, you want it to warm up and that way it can like drain from the valve cover up here down to the bottom end. It'll be a lot easier when you do that. If you uh, change your oil just from a straight cold start, it's gonna be like really bad and it's not gonna be great. So, you know, that's that's like the best thing you can do. All right, well, so after you let your bike warm up, you need to pull off your skid plate if you have one. So, I mean, that's what I'm gonna do first. You need to pull off the old skid plate. Usually these are 10 millimeters or 12 millimeters. This one just happens to be a 10. So we're gonna knock these loose right here. They're gonna be one here, one on the other side and usually one or two under the bottom. Plate. Yeah, that's why it pays to pull off your skid plate every once in a while and at least spray out from under the skid plate. All right guys, so next we're gonna have to need a 10 millimeter Allen boat or bit, whatever you wanna call that, to take out the drain plug. I didn't know that these had a drain plug like that. Most of them are either like a 12 or a 14. Some of them are even 10 millimeters. But let's squeeze up under here and pop this loose. All right guys, after about 15, maybe 20 minutes of me messing with this drain boat, it seems as the previous owner had put a star boat or a star Allen boat or whatever this is called, star head, into the drain plug. So I had to beat one of these in with a rubber mallet just to get the drain boat out. So we're gonna you know, find the drain boat again and then twist the thing out. There's gonna be a lot of dirt falling off here because I haven't cleaned much under the skid plate. Ooh, just dropped that all over my hand. Did not expect that to come out that fast. Did not expect that to come out that fast at all. A few minutes later. Once your oil is finished draining, you will want to pull off your good old oil filter bolts next. And then keep a track of which order these come out in and which way the spring comes out because there is a spring inside of here on the back of the oil filter. And you, if you lose that, you know, you won't have to replace it because you absolutely have to have that. Also, pay attention on how this comes out because you have to install this the exact way in which it come off because if you don't, it's a bad deal. Looks like I need to wipe this off real quick. So it's usually the longer boat on the bottom, shorter boat on the top, as you can see here. And you wanna pay attention how this comes out. So it went in just like so. So we're gonna have to put it back in just like so, but we're gonna change this filter. So you'll want, it says spring towards engine this side. Most of them have like a thing like that, like a little warning on the back of it. Make sure you put the spring towards the engine, but keep your spring, do not lose that. Once you have everything off, now is really a good time to inspect the O-rings around these. I ordered a Tusk oil filter kit and the oil filter or oil change kit always comes with the O-rings, but I feel comfortable enough to keep these O-rings because they look pretty good. So we're just gonna keep these and rerun these. Okay guys, once you have all of this oil in here drained out, you'll wanna put your oil filter back on there. The way this is, is this like little cushiony rubber side goes down. And then the spring will go in the back of this like so. And then she'll slide in here just like this. You wanna, want, you wanna make sure that you put the right boats in the right spot, obviously. Put the long boat in the bottom where it came out from and the short boat in the top where it came out from. You always wanna to refer to your service manual for what the specs of these things are. I never like ever torque anything down the spec. Uh, if something happens, you know, that's my fault. Of course, you know, I'm asking for it to happen. 
but I've never had any issues, never torquing anything down the spec. You know, you can, if you work on things long enough, you can kind of just tell that, you know, it's too tight or tight enough or not tight enough. You know, it's just, it's kind of second nature over time. So, you know, with these, you don't want to tighten them down like you're tightening down like a dang axle boat. It's not like it's going to jitter out. It's not near a moving part. This, you just want to tighten down just snug enough so the filter doesn't come off and you won't have trouble pulling it off the next time. A little longer than a few minutes later. So once you got your skid plate on, you want to grab your choice of oil. Next, what you want to do is you want to take your little fill hole bolt thing out or your little, you know, we have a dipstick on this, so you want to pull the dipstick out. And you'll take your funnel and oil of choice. We're using Honda 10W30 and DM4 oil, whatever it's called. We're just going to fill her up. This calls for, I think, a little over one and a half quarts. But we're just going to fill it up until, you know, it looks good. All right, so guys, after you get your first quart of oil put in there, you wanna start your bike and let it warm up. Like, let it, not really warm up, but kinda just let it get up to about operating temp. And then check the oil again to make sure you still have an adequate amount of oil. And get it up level. Dip her down in there, pull her out. A little low, so we need to put a little extra in there and then we should be good to go. All right, guys, so this is optional, but obviously you can take it for a short little test ride, ride you a couple wheelies, you know, let the oil do its thing, seep into it, you know, whatever it does. But, you know, let's go ride some wheelies before the GoPro dies. graveyard went back up the hill Woo. need to tighten my chain that'll probably be uh next day's video whenever that is what monday today's friday yes on monday guys and gals this is the end of the video if you enjoyed the video please be sure to drop a like on the video you know if you like content like this please be sure to subscribe to the channel as it does help out the channel tremendously but this has been the willy weasel peace out